So I'll start my presentation here. And as I mentioned before by email, I going to go to a, like a tutor, tutorial on how to use the string database inside R to do some protein-protein interaction network enrichment in your data set. So I will not be presenting this presentation on slides, but it will be on R code, but inside Jupyter Notebook. So we, we can go step by step in this analysis. And I could, uh, so I can explain a little bit of the uh, string database for, uh, package on R, because the way that, that it works is, I think it's a, a little bit not very intuitive. So I think it'd be very helpful if I could show how to run this uh, to you guys to, so we can all like uh, learn together. So for those who do not know, the string database is a very popular protein-protein uh, interaction uh, database. So it contains a lot of information regarding genes and proteins for different types of organisms, such as uh, humans and mouse and so on. I think like if you are working a little bit with bioinformatics uh, and gene expression, and probably you already um, uh, look at before string or have used it uh, along of the years because it's a very uh, popular database. So the way that uh, like the baseline functions of how string database work, you go to string-db.org uh, and you can go like select and let's say that you have a list of genes that you have that is from, a, let's say a differential expression analysis or a gene that will be obtained by the co-expression or any type of clustering that you have. So let's say you have any set of genes and you want to see uh, if these genes are enrichments for, enriched for some specific uh, biological pathways or you, if you want to use network analysis to see how the your genes are inside of the human PPI network. So the way that it's uh, normally work in the database that you have a, a list of genes, you just copy your list of genes. Here, you just like an arbitrary list of genes. You select the organisms of your, of your gene list, search on the database, and the database will try to annotate all your genes. In this case, I'm using gene symbol. You continue. And here you have, here you have the network, the human PPI network of the interactions of your genes, where any of your genes are the nodes of that network and the edges are the type of interaction of these, the genes in the network. And as you can see, you have uh, edges of multiple colors that because the string database use a, a, a lot of forms of different evidence to see, to say that is there actually an edge or not. So if you use text mining to see if there is an edge uh, it use if uh, use some co-expression uh, studies on the literature or some physical uh, wet lab um, studies to confirm that there is indeed a physical interaction bet uh, between uh, two nodes or there is any other method methodology like text mining or co-expression to say oh we're not sure if there is a physical interaction but there is might be a, a good evidence that there is an interaction in this network. So uh, you can see the, all the network that you have and also do some, a lot of uh, a set of analysis in this network in your input list of genes. Uh, string, for example, it do the geo enrichment of the, the list of genes. It you say, for example, if your list of genes are enriched to the PPI, that is mean if you consider all the human PPI network, you consider the number of genes that you have, so here, for example, I have an input 106 genes, and this string say for me that this 106 genes has 93 edges between them. And if you pick up 106 genes by random chains in the human PPI network that has something like 20,000 or 20,000 different type of genes, by handle chains of 106 genes, you are expected to have uh, only 42 edges. But as we have much more uh, number of edges between our set of genes than by hand-on chains, you, you, you got uh, 
uh, a, a very significant p-value of this PPI network. In other words, that means if in that particular uh, list of genes, there are more interaction between them, between all of them, by in your list of genes that, that you have by random, random chance in the human uh, PPI network. And that is for us, uh, could be a very good sign that our set of genes are specific for the uh, particular or the same biological pathways that are involved. And for here on the database, you can do some a, a lot of some sorting uh, of analysis, not only the geo pathway, but you can also export all the nodes and the edges of the network. So you can use it uh, on Cytoscape, for example, or Gephi that is on application on Java to plot networks, or you can use other uh, applications as the iGraph, which is the one that are going to show you how today. And also you can do some more uh, specific set of analysis like try to see in your uh, network, there is any clusters that are uh, elements of the network that are more connected with other than the rest. So here I am just doing a, a k-means clustering algorithm in this set specific set of genes. And I choose it to use uh, the k-means three clusters. And these are the three clusters of the network. So it will be interesting for you, for example, to see to see, okay, let's pick up only the genes of the cluster of blue and see if they are pointing to a specific set of geo pathways than the rest. So there is a, a very, a, a lot of good uh, uh, and different things to do here on string database. But sometimes uh, you don't, uh, want to see to see like one list of genes because if you want to see like one list of genes just use the database and paste here in the database and you do everything for you but sometimes you have multiple list of genes or you just uh, or maybe you want to do some additional analysis that are not available here so in that case we are going to use the string database package on r that is a quite recent one so we can do like same sort of the same type of analysis and exporting these results to do some other nice enrichment analysis and also some other uh, network analysis as well. So I've been, I will start in the demonstration of the, the string uh, database package here on R. I'm using the Jupyter not notebook here, but with the R kernel, so we can all see the results together. Okay, so I just like loading all the libraries necessary, and I'm just going to use the option inside the Jupyter notebook to plot my all the plots in the in the um, in the larger format, so we can see it better. So for these uh, demonstrations, I will use a very specific set of genes that I choose. That is from this very re recent and interesting paper that is mapping genomic loci impl implicates the genes in synaptic biology and schizophrenia. It's a very recent one published in Nature uh, on this year, so just like a few months ago. So in, in this paper, they basically just did uh, a very robust uh, gen uh, genome-wide association studies to find like variants and loci that might be related to schizophrenia and also to related to some parts of fetal neurodevelopment as well and some other psych, uh, psychiatry disorders but uh, not only they performed the JUAS but also they perform some other specific JUAS analysis just as the fine map algorithm in summary uh, Mendelian randomizations that are more restricted uh, analysis to pick up some uh, interesting variants related to your traits. So this is just the, the figure figure one of the overview of the JUAS of this paper. And they, as you can see here, they use a lot of samples and, and, and there's a lot of data set here. But I just, and all the, the pipeline and all the, the steps that they did to find these results. So basically what the, we, we are going to use here is this, this prioritize, prioritize genes that is like a circle uh, of 120 genes that has a high evidence 
to be highly related to both schizophrenia, to both uh, fetal neurodevelopment, and also some relations with some variants that are present on autism spectrum disorders as well. So there, so you are going to use as example to this uh, uh, on example on 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 this work here. This one hundred and twenty unique set of genes. So we are going to use the same uh, path, download path of the the of, of this paper here to download the supplemental material that contains the table uh, that we are going to use uh, to extract the list of genes to run the string. So basically, I'm downloading the the name of the the zip file that contains all the supplemental supplementary materials of this paper. And from inside of the supplemental material of this paper, we are going to look on the table 12 of it. And the table 12 here is basically that already downloaded. It's downloaded or it is on a in, is on XLSX format. We're going to read it that now in using the uh, I think I use here the read XL library on R to uh, to which is good to read this type of Excel sheets. So these are a table of interesting of this uh, paper. So you have uh, circa of 685 different genes. So each row is one different gene with the symbol, gene symbol, the ensemble ID, and also if there are any SNP related to this symbol. So for this huge table right here, we, we only want the gene symbol information. And also there is also information in a binary way to see if that gene is present in one of that uh, steps of the analysis. So for example, if the gene is present on the fine map GEOAS study, it will show here in the fine map 3.5 as one. So you see here the ABH2 is present on the fine map 3.5. And our main interesting lies here in the last column is are the genes that are prioritized based in all in, the, in this analysis. So are you just going to filter uh, this table here to, to pick up all the genes that the present one in the priorita prioritized column that are the genes of are interesting. And so I, I use a jipper here just to read the table, filter all the genes that are indeed prioritized in this column. And I just want to select specific columns of the data frame. So we can see here, this, so we have now 120 genes that are the most, uh, the highest evidence of these genes. And using the table comment, we can see here the, the majority of these genes, 106 are genes from uh, our protein coding genes. We have so has one pseudogene, one antisense, and, and one long no coding RNA gene as well. That might be related to schizophrenia, neurodevelopment, and in other neuropsychiatric disorders. So the way that uh, strict database works is first that we already has our set of genes that we want. First, you're going to start the section uh, within a string database. So uh, despite you are going to, uh, to download the string database package on R, you are not going to process uh, everything on your computer, but you are going, the string, the string database, it will send all your commands to a string database website and from there, you can retrieve it in your computer. So first thing, you have to use the string db command function and, and use the, the dollar sign as you are going to select a column. But in this case, you are going to select what kind of operation you are going to do. So here, I want to see use a new, a new session on string database. And I want to use the latest version of string database, this 11.5. So it's common that uh, depending on the version that you are, you are not going, to, some, some genes are ex excluded or included. So the, the same goes with the edges between all your genes or proteins. So I'm going to use, choose the latest version. I'm going to use, uh, select what, what are species. So 9606, almost sapiens species, species. 
And the score threshold I want is 400. The score threshold goes from zero to 1000. And the largest is the score is the highest amount of evidence that the edge between two genes exists. So if he, there is a like experiment on tech, uh, that string found on, with text mining and also experiments papers with co-expression, uh, you have more evidence that that edge are possible to exist or not. So you're, you're going to use a, a score of 400 that it's a moderate score to see if there is any edges, true edges or not. Because when we are working with the PPI network, the vast majority uh, of edges are false positives that are noisy data that the, the network attributes as an edge. So you, you want to be a, a little bit stringent. Uh, but if you want to go uh, very like, uh, uh, with a moderate or high stringent, you can use 700 as a, as a score threshold that 700 would be like edges with, with, uh, with high evidence that exists. But for this example, we are going to use only 400 and are going to save everything in my uh, current input directory. And now we are going to map our uh, set of genes for inside the string database. So for this, we are going to use the string db function, dollar sign, and we are going to map everything. And we are going to map everything inside the, the way that works. Your input has to be on the data frame format. And you have to type in which column of your data frame are your gene symbols. In this case, our gene symbols is, are on the symbol ID column that are this one. And if they find any edges that it cannot map it, I want the, uh, the string database to remove that. So I'm going to run this. Uh, as I mentioned before, string database, uh, this package only transmit our data to, to string database. So it takes about 50 seconds to one minute, depending on the, the size of the list of genes to the website map all your genes and send it back to you. So it, it takes a little bit, uh, something like one minute when you are going to map uh, a, a list of genes. So just wait a little bit. Just And also, uh, String Database has a lot of different functions like to plot your network, to retrieve edges between your set of genes. And you can also, you, every time you can using the help function as well, comment to see how this comment work. So uh, our genes were mapped. And if you're just saying for all our 120 genes, uh, string cannot uh, map a circle of 11% of, of our identifiers. So probably it was only able to uh, map our protein coding genes, but we still have like roughly 90% of our network intact. So I'm just going to sue the help function. And if you try the string command help and using it, for example, here as an argument, the, the command that you want, in this case would be the map command that is in your view. And we will use a, a, a very brief summary of how this function work and which type of input data you need to use. Great. So now you, we have a data frame with our mapped string database that looks like just like that. We have our symbol ID that are our data frame. And now you have an string ID for all set of genes that are somewhat similar to an ensemble set of annotation, but is very is particular to a string database. So for each set of genes, we will have a corresponding string ID. Uh, of this gene or protein. So these are the information that string database which we will use to, uh, to try to plot the network and do the, all the analysis in string server. So now we have a huge data frame with, our, with all the information with our genes, our ensemble IDs, saying if these genes are indeed protein coding, I think the vast majority of them are only protein coding and the string ID of these genes. 
So basically, we all already have a one data frame that contains all the information of our nodes in our network. So great. So now we are going to use another string database uh, function that now we are going to get the interactions between all these nodes as we are going to use as an input. This, after the you get the, all your genes mapped to string database, they get interactions, uh, functions is a little bit quicker to run. Let's say that interactions, or maybe could be the, the same time as you're going to map. So circa of like one minute to get all the interactions. So great. So of all of input list of genes, now we, we, we get another data frame that get the, the, the start position of the edge and the end position of the of the edge. So the, the, the you have this gene here that is interaction with this gene here. So and the combined score that is that combined scores of multiple studies to so you can put a score in the edge to say how confident string are that this edge actually exists or not. As we put a, a threshold of 400 at least, we are only seeing edges with at, at least 400 of, of these scores. So you can see here that our input list of genes, more than like 100, we have 186 uh, ed, uh, lists of edges. So we, 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 we can see that there is a lot of uh, edges between our initial set of genes. And we, we want to plot this network to see how the thing is. We can use the plot network function and as argument, we are going to use the, the string ID of the data frame that you are going to use. So here is all will be our network of our input set of genes. Here on the, on the beginning of the plot, you have your number of input proteins that you are, going, you are using, the number of interactions, and the, the p-value associated with the number of edges of the number of input genes that you use compare it to the with a with, with a random chains in the PPI network. So you can see here for this specific set of genes of this paper here, uh, we see we see that there is a, some uh, nodes that are isolated and are connected, or there are just uh, have uh, a few connections, but the majority of the nodes are basically from the same. Uh, module in the same network. And here I'm attributing the, the edges only to the list of genes that I'm using. But you could also add some parameters in your input to say, I not only want to you construct the edges in this specific list of genes, but I want you, you construct the network considering as well the immediate neighbors of this type of genes. Because it's, it could be the case that when you put the list of genes, you don't have any connection between these, these elements. But if you add the immediate neighbor of these networks, you suddenly are going to appear uh, interactions between all these elements. So the, your elements might be not exactly neighbors to each other, might, might, but they, they might be neighbors of your neighbors in common, have neighbors in common. And if you have neighbors in common in a network, this is also a very relevant information that they could be also related to the same biological pathways or involved in the same biological process as well. And now that we have our string database network in R, we could try to clusterize the network in very different ways. Uh, you can use the own string database get clusters arguments that use uh, different type of network analysis algorithms to find uh, clusters in your network. So for example, let's try to use the function get clusters using as input our list of uh, string ID nodes using the, the default algorithm that is called fast greedy, that is the most uh, quicker one to run. It is already run. And based on my input of this network here, let's see our clusters in our network. 
Great. So the output here would be a, a list of each uh, with each number is one set of cluster in this network. So in the, in, in this case here, consider all the inputs that I use it here. It find it uh, 53 clusters, but the majority of the clusters are isolate nodes. Isolate nodes. So as they are isolated, they cannot connect to each other. So they are considered their own module. So what is interesting here is that clusters like cluster one that has a bunch of different uh, genes on it. So let's going to try to filter this cluster list by string, trying to get only clusters that are have has at the, uh, are at least connected to one element. So I'm just going to use a supply function here to, to filter all the elements inside of my list of lists that has more than one element. Okay, and now we have our 11 clusters that are appearing uh, to us to be the most connected element in my network. So we can also plot any of these clusters. So let's plot the cluster one here and cluster two. And now we have a specific uh, sub network of our in network of input as well. So that would be cluster one. So you have some very interesting genes here, like for example, like CAC1 OSC that are related with calcium, uh, calcium channels. It is very relation with relation with schizophrenia and also green 2A. And here is also cluster two that appears to be a lot of elements connected to each other. And just remember here that I use it here to calculate this cluster, the fast grid algorithm. So if you use any other type of algorithms, because they uh, calculate the relations in, in a very different manner, you are going to uh, always get a different um, number of clusters and clusters with different, different element sites. So you can, there is not a, a, a better or worse algorithm to calculate these type of clusters. You just, uh, as they are, they are calculated different things, you just use the ones that are more suited for you. Me, for example, I really like these edges between this uh, algorithm because it's able to detect the clusters based on genes that are that are capable to connect uh, different parts of the networks. And I'm going to perform this edge between these clusters with the, iGraph, uh, with the iGraph package as well later in this tutorial. So we can also, as I said before, you can compartmentalize our network and see and plot this as well. And also we can use the melt function. Let's see here if it's going to work. And with this melt function here, I am just uh, plotting, uh, I just like cleaning my network to say, I don't want to you to use any nodes that are isolated. I want to only want you to plot the networks that have nodes that has at least one connection. So, uh, and not only you can plot the network inside the string database, but you can also do some sort of ge uh, gene ontology or any other biological pathways enrichment with your input of data set and just have to use the get enrichment function and using as input your list of string IDs. And you calculate everything. And you, in the output would be a data frame saying all the, the relevant uh, biological enrichment of your network. So here I just seeing the, the first and the last uh, rows in this data frame. So you have all the, the category of the enrichment. So you have uh, geo biological process, geo cellular component, cellular comp uh, compartment, CAG, weak pathways, and so go on. So for example, if you are going to, to look at this pathway here, we have uh, of our input list of genes, we have 16 genes that are from related to post synapse uh, geo process. And here are the list of genes of these that are enriched 
of our list of genes that are enriched to this uh, GO pathway. And also, you, it string also calculates uh, a, a p value and adjusted FDR p value uh, associated with these pathways. And as I said before, uh, this enrichment, get enrichment function uh, uses a lot of different type of databases. Uh, you use a cellular component, uh, use CAG, keywords, tissues, and there is also, for example, if you have, uh, you can use this PMID that is very interesting as well. And you see if any uh, set of genes of your input lists are, appear, are appearing together in the literature. So for example, if you have, you have a, a no list of genes and you, see, you want to see also if they have any more uh, specific relation to literature, you see here that 12 of your genes that are this one here, are appearing together in this paper right here. So it be is, is very useful as well to, to see if your genes are study, being studied together as well in the literature and to, to have a whole picture of your uh, of your results. And as the enrichment data table output is a data frame, you can use this data frame as well and use a very simple ggplot command. Uh, using the geo cellular component. And you can rank your list of pathways, for example, based in the number of, of the genes in this pathway and the associated p values of these, uh, your enrichment. So, for example, in our uh, input set of genes here, we see all this enrichment for synapse membrane, synapse, postsynaptic membrane. So a lot of these cytogenes are, pop, are pointing up to a lot of synapse uh, biological process. Also from neural projection, we have like 22 genes related to neural projection with all with a very significant p-value. So you can use this output in your data frame and reshape it and do, do it whatever you want as a, just like a normal gene ontology result or analysis. And you can, Yes, you can also use uh, different types of databases to do the enrichment. And also one uh, very interesting uh, uh, interesting uh, way to conduct further analysis as we can, as we have a bunch of genes in this data set that are related to synapse, I'm going to pick up the synapses uh, biological project uh, uh, biological path from my database. And I want the, uh, this synapse uh, biological process that has 22 genes. And I want only that. And the one thing that I'm going to do here, I am just going to extract all the string IDs of this path. Well, that are related to synapse. And I'm going to do some kind of network analysis with only the specific set of genes of that pathway because they are very enriched to synapse. So I'm just going to use uh, the string split command to uh, separate all the string IDs of this uh, column and the gene symbol as well, because here in the way that this input are, all the string IDs of this pathway are just separated by commas, but they are inside the same cell. So I'm just going to use the string split and split it by comma. So in that sense, I will have uh, two different uh, set of lists. And when each one of these lists are just an element inside of this specific cell. And I'm just going to reshape that into a data frame here using the string, same string split command. And now we will have all the 22 genes that are inside this uh, geo synapse biological pathways with the, with the gene symbol and in the string ID that will be important to us to plot this specific set of network, but we are going to use only this set of network as input of our genes. So let's try to 
plot using the string database and plotting mechanisms to plot this network, only the network of this pathway. And, and, and we see here the majority of the elements of this network are connected to each other, but we have some few elements that are isolated because probably this pathway here has a much more nodes that we are going to using as an input. And this isolated nodes are connected to genes that are, are outside our input or enriched set of genes. So we can using get using the command get interactions to get all the uh, data frame with the, all the edges of this network. Great, now we have all the edges of this network, saying the string ID that's saying the start or ending point of the network and also the combinate score of this one. And here I am just going to use the, the left join because I'm not, I'm not going to uh, want to work with this string ID for using to plot on iGraph network, but I want to use the gene symbol instead. So it would be easier for us to work. So here, now you have the string ID and the correspondent um, gene symbol of the G this string ID. And now I'm just going to extract the unique edges because I just I, I don't want to uh, work with multiple edges between two elements. I just want to work with one. And now, and now for our um, circa of 20 something genes, we have 31 unique edges to this. And now I'm just going to reshape this data frame a little bit. So we, it could be easier to use as input in an iGraph package. So, perfect. So now you have all um, our data frame. So now, so now and finally you have two data frames. One data frame called our edges that are the edges of my network that are only the edges of the genes inside the synapse biological pathway that was identified by string. And you have the, this go path uh, data frame that, that are the gene symbol of the the gene symbol of, of all the string IDs, but this one contains all the nodes in my network because when you are going to use the iGraph, you can use the iGraph to read a data frame with edges. And you also need to uh, use the argument, uh, a second data frame to see which name of, the, of these nodes you want the, the network to be. So here I'm going to use the iGraph package so use the, the function graph from data frame. And are you going to use as argument my edges data frame, the data frame all edges that are this one here. I want that that the network not to be directed, but I want to be with the, without uh, directions or arrows. I just want the interaction per se. And the vertices is the nodes of my network. And the nodes of my network are in the second data frame called go path here in our, this column here. And with this, you created a iGraph object. Uh, the iGraph object is uh, basically is not a, a list or a data frame, is a iGraph object. It's, 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 it's somewhat tricky to you manipulate this object. But now that we have an um, iGraph object with all the sub or a sub network, we can count how many nodes are in our network now using the vcount g. And we know that we have 22 genes. And you can also use the v, uh, the command v that is from vertex, vertices, and the name of the network. It should also do the same. Uh, the same output saying, oh, you have 22 vertices. And you can also use the command E from edges to calculate how many edges are in your iGraph object. And for example, you can also, from your input of network, see which are the nodes that are most connected. And it will output you a list here, uh, based in your initial, initial 
input, in, not in, in a specific or alphabetical or any order, but you can put this list in an order here. You let's use the sort function. And we can see here from this subset, the gene green 2A has are the most connected element in my network as we is GRM1, GPM6A, and so on. And we have a, a, that few elements that are isolated in our networks as well. And okay, great. So we, we can use the base R function plot to plot an iGraph object based in all the inputs that we use it here. And this is our the base uh, plot of uh, iGraph. It's just like that. Yeah. As we input the set of edges and also the, the set of names of each one of these nodes, it will automatically will, will name each one of these nodes for us. And one thing important and is when, when you are going to use the iGraph is to also use the seed command in R before you are going to plot, because otherwise it will, each time to you plot the same network, it will randomize the, not the type of connections, but the shape of your network. So sometimes your network might be upside down, sometimes it's not. So it's very important to use the same seed command when you are going to use the iGraph to, to reproducibility and also have the same result all the time. So let's use the seed here to plot the network all the time. And now we are going to, as I calculate here that these three set of genes here are, are my most connected elements in my network. I'm going to focus on, on them. So I'm going to add uh, just an, another column in my go path data frame to say, just with information to see uh, uh, in for the specific uh, genes that are the most connected one, the, the three more connected, I want them to be for a specific color. I want them to be, to be in the gold color and the others elements, I want they to be on gray color. I'm just going to use a very uh, simple grapple with the uh, if else here. And now in our go path, we have, we added just another column to say that if our gene is a hub, in my network are most connected will be in a gold color. Otherwise it will be on gray color. And we can add this exactly same column that I just, just, you just created here in go path in, inside the, the, uh, in the nodes of my iGraph object. I just created an, an, another column in my iGraph object with the output of color that will be gray or gold in this exactly same order. So now I can plot this network and did exactly what I did before. So with that, you can color your nodes by a specific set of genes or nodes for specific studies that is on your preference. And also not only with iGraph, you can modify the colors, but also the size of the nodes. So not only I want to the these top nodes here to be the most connected, but as they are the most connected, I want them to be the largest elements of my network. So I'm going to do the same stuff as did before with the colors, but just adding a size column, saying if these are this specific set of genes, I want the size to be 20. Otherwise, to other the gray elements of network, the size would be 15. So now I'm going to run this and plot this everything. And now we have our set of nodes a little bit larger than the rest. That should be useful if you want to highlight any specific set of genes. And here I'm just highlighting them based on the number of connections, but you can use any type of criteria that you want. And also we can also increase the, the, the width of the, any of all these edges as well. So they appear uh, uh, a little bit thicker than the regular one. And also you can, uh, using direct in the, in the R base function, we can, instead of attributing that into a data frame and passing inside the, the iGraph object G, you can use functions inside the plot function itself in, using commands. Here, I'm just saying, I want to the, ignore the edge color and put S there as orange, for example. 
So there is a, a very different type of, of manipulation that you do with iGraph to plot the network the way that you want. And of course, we can plot this network in the very different uh, network topologies. For example, you, sometimes you want to plot the network as a circle. Sometimes this is useful when you, you want to uh, attribute relationships to a specific elements of your network. You can do use a circle or, or in a specific sphere. And, and of course, and one thing important is that the position of these nodes is not random or it's not arbitrary. The position of the, of the nodes are based on the distance of one node for each other in relation to the rest. So I really like this, uh, the freshman triangled uh, FR um, topology. That, so because with that uh, layout here, you are clearly able to see modules inside your network, for example, or if you don't want to use any nodes in your network, you can only use the words itself. Sometimes it's useful if you, you are just, let's say, plot, plotting the interaction between geo pathways or any other larger terms. And you can color that by any shape or way that you want. And also in, with iGraph, you can calculate uh, very different types of network parameters, not only as degree, but as transitivity, the diameter of your network, that is how many steps in your network it takes to run from one side to the other. And also you can plot the degree of your network. Let's say here, I'm using the degree function of the iGraph that will use the size of the, the number of connection of the nodes relation to the size. So the, it's ignoring my initial output and using the number of connections of each one of these nodes to attribute the size. So the nodes that are the most connected here are the bigger one. And you see here the isolate nodes, they are very small here. And you can also plot the degree distribution in my network. And also, and, as, and you can also use the own iGraph uh, cluster algorithm instead of the string algorithm to find modules inside of your networks. So I will use, use the edge between this algorithm in my network here to see if there is any module in this small subset of network and plotting then as a dendrogram here. And you see here that we find a couple of modules, one, two, three, four huge modules in my network of the genes and some isolate modules that are genes that are not connected with the rest. And we can use the same information of clustering and plot the network with the iGraph. In iGraph, do this very nice, uh, this is default parameter of the network and you know, when we, you are able to identify all your modules in a network by this color. And we also have, as I use, use it, the edge between us uh, algorithm to, to calculate this type of modularity. All the edges in red are the elements in my network that are the, the, the responsible to connect the distant elements from other modules. So for example, this gene here, Z and F 804A are connecting to these two elements of another module and also this one here. So the genes that are connecting elements from other modules, other parts of my network are very important to us because uh, information flow are very important to, to, for the information of the network flow to, to, to your set of genes. So it might be the case to do this, this set of analysis with your set of genes and to try to prioritize the genes in this network that are connecting distant types of, of your network because they are might be uh, very relevant and very important biological functions. And you can also see the the number of uh, modules that your algorithm calculated. In this case, you have nine, four here, and more five uh, isolated elements. See how 
a score of modularity being zero to one being the highest amount, the most amount of modules your network have. You can also delete uh, any uh, nodes that are isolated as well. And now we can plot a network with only a specific subset of genes and do the clusterization again. And now we have our one, two, three, or four network modules here. And now we have a very subset of genes that might be interesting to look up the specific modules. And we can rank these genes based on degree, based on the between score or any other network analysis uh, that we want. And if you want to extract any type of this specific set of nodes to see which are the nodes in the cluster one, you just use the, the command CAB, that is my, is my argument, is my variable, my vector that contain all the, the modularity. And all the nodes in cluster one are these five set of genes. So you can use this in, uh, in very uh, different ways. Uh, you can, if you want to look more be, uh, about network analysis, I recommended this specific tutorial here for an iGraph I, that I use it in this example. You can do a very, very different and nice things using iGraph. And here are the other, uh, the other uh, package that I use it in this tutorial. And I'm going to send to you guys all the this Jupyter notebook as a PDF format with all the commands and the, all the outputs. So if you want, you can try all this example and adapt it the script in your way, in the, in the way that you like. And that's it. Just, just like the session info. And if someone has any questions, I'll be glad to ask, to, to answer. Awesome. Sorry. Thank you very much, Arthur, for the very right. um, sensitive and detailed uh, presentation on StringDB and um, um, iGraph. So I'm going to stop the recording here.